You're listening to Sound, Sound. Insightful. Insightful. Insightful Bible Teaching for a Meaningful, meaningful. For a meaningful, meaningful Christian walk. walk. We've been going through the book of Exodus, and I may be subjective here. I think this is the most critical message you're going to get in the past three years. So if you've just come for the first time, blessed are you. So tonight we're going to talk about, you know, the book of Exodus is called Exodus for a reason. is because they left Egypt. Now we realize the actual Exodus doesn't take up much space in the book. There's a lot of other things. Um, but that's the stage we're at. Last week we covered the Passover. And the Passover was where it was the final plague. It's to the point where... Now the Egyptians, are, they just are driving the people out. And so they're going to leave. They're going to leave Egypt. They're going to leave far, far behind them. But it happens in a very, 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 very particular way. And what we're going to share about tonight actually is a type of baptism. And I want to make a couple qualifying statements before we begin. You know, in, in the Bible and in Christian practice, there's different understandings on different things. And some, they're not that important. But some things are very important. I mean, it's life or death. If someone told you, oh, you know, are you saved? You know, um, this happened with uh, a brother I know. Not here, it was a different campus, but um, we preached the gospel to him. He received the Lord with us and was enjoying everything. And one day some students met him on campus. And, you know, they had a good heart. They're all preaching the gospel. It's a very good thing. And they asked him, if you had to stand before God right now, what would you tell him? Just like the proof of your salvation. And he just, you know... He said, I really enjoy the Lord. I'm something, you know, very, very positive. And he said, well, sorry to say, I don't think you're saved. Because in their mind, you had to say some very specific words and repeat like a word-for-word -word prayer. Otherwise, you're not saved. This is wrong. I mean, I'll just tell you. It's not a matter of debate. It's not a matter, well, Dave, that's your opinion. It's wrong. It's not according to the Bible. But, so we need to see these critical matters. These are life and death. These have eternal consequences. We need to be right in these things. And our understanding matters. I've used this example before. You know, you're taking classes, and you think, well, my professor's just a nice guy, and I'm going to take the final exam, and I think if I just draw him a nice picture, he'll probably give me an A. I mean, that's really a nice thought, right? You will not get an A, at least from any self-respecting professor at a decent educational institution. Maybe they'll have pity on you and let you take it again, but... You don't get to do things just the way you think. Salvation, baptism have real significance. Now, you, you may be new to the Christian life. You may have been brought up a Christian. And there's a lot of different traditions and theologies, and they have different understandings of these things. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll hear something that's not the way you were taught. Get used to it. That's life. There's, you go through life outside of even religion, you're going to hear things that are different than what you've been taught. You can close yourself off to that and say, no, no, that's not the way I've been taught. But you might be closing yourself off to the truth. And closing yourself off to the truth can have very serious consequences. Wouldn't you rather, I'm giving you a choice right now, in something really important, wouldn't you rather have someone tell you, Angel, 
you are wrong. You're doing it wrong. Or would you rather say, no, I'm doing it right. I'm going to hold them fast to my thing. When in fact, you are doing it wrong, and it's going to get you in big trouble. Which would you rather have? Preserve your pride or admit with humility, I can still learn and I can be wrong. So I'm saying this, what we're going to present tonight might be different. Might be. It may not be different, but it might be different in some ways than what you've been taught before, what you've heard before. Um, and I would just say, don't take it from me. You can take it from me. I think it's, it's pretty safe. But go to the Bible. Ultimately, that's what we base everything on. We don't teach funny things. Everything we teach is based on the Word of God. And not just on pulling a verse or two out of context. We see the whole of the divine revelation, how everything fits. Baptism fits in just an amazing way. Baptism is kind of a mysterious thing. Um, it can be just a ritual, it can be misapplied, it can be ignored. It should not be ignored. It should not be misapplied. And it should be understood. So that's the first statement. Second statement, I got a few verses on here. The first verses are about the devil. It's like, wow, you're going to talk about the devil. Well, <clears throat> we don't like to talk about the devil. We don't like to give the devil his due. But you just have to be aware. You know, we, we got a, a, a few, uh, like Shane, you know, and you guys are, um, you're in ROTC, or is it ROTC, or, okay. ROTC is for what? Tra training, but for what? A future officer in the Army. What, what's the Army for? Yeah. Protect the United... I mean, this is before some of your time, but, um, you know, when we were attacked 9-11, we went to war. We'd been at in relative peace for a long time before that. And a number of people joined the armed forces. It's, it's a good thing to be in. You can get training. Um, you know, there's a lot of good benefits. And they were getting in it for the good benefits. Then it's like, hey, we're going to war. And I'm like, hang on. This isn't what I signed up for. I came here to get an education, to get training. Don't ask me to go fight, you know, and shoot, and, you know, maybe get killed. I want out. <clears throat> it's kind of like, what, what were you thinking when you signed up? This, this, this is the army. Yeah, well, hopefully we're not having any wars. But if we have a war, we need to have a prepared ready, train, armed forces. So I think it's great. You know, you guys can do this. Um, but it's like, be aware. There's an enemy. Um, Genesis 3.1 says the serpent, this is the devil, was more crafty. He, he, he's, he's a snake. You know, snakes are always like viewed as like kind of shifty and clever and there's a reason for that this is the devil and it said <clears throat> second corinthians 2 11 says uh, we may not be taken advantage of by satan for we are not ignorant of his schemes or his devices we know the way he operates you may not know the way he operates you need to learn because he's operating he does things I'll give you an example. <clears throat> We're talking about baptism. Um, baptism is very, very, very important. And the devil hates baptism. And the devil will do whatever he can to prevent someone from being baptized. And we've had, you know, we've baptized a lot of people. But we've also had some that's like they're ready to get baptized. And what happens? I mean, you know, real things happen. I, I'm, I'm coming to get baptized. My car broke down. Why did that happen? One time it was like, yeah, I got an appointment, I'm going to get baptized in two days. I just found out my grandma has cancer. 
That's terrible. Yeah. Why, why did she have to get cancer today? We had, we had one. We were really fighting for him to get baptized. And <clears throat> this is really an amazing night, but they ended up being three baptisms. But one was one we'd really been working on. And finally someone calls me, and it's like a Friday night, like 10 o'clock at night. And they said, this one wants to get baptized. And it's like, we didn't say, okay, let's, let's do it Sunday morning. It's like, now. He's ready. So we went down, we filled up the, we had a church building, we had a baptismal. Filled it up and baptized him. And I was one of the ones that went into the water with him. And then I come out, and on my cell phone, I get another call. And it's getting closing in on midnight. And they say this other one wants to get baptized. This other one was a Hindu. And <clears throat> he was an undergrad student. And over the course of like two or three years, he began to know the Lord. Eventually, he called on the name of the Lord. But getting baptized was, and we, we can get into it, why that's so difficult. And they said, but he needs to return a book to his friend. And I said, you go with him. Drive him, get out of the car with him, go up to the door with him. Don't let him out of your sight. Does that sound paranoid? Does that sound like we're some kind of controlling? That's like weird, right? I knew. He goes into his friend's house with that book. That's it. We won't see him again. The next morning would come around and he'd say, yeah, I think I changed my mind. We know how the devil works. We're not ignorant. He'll use good things. I mean, this next verse says, Satan will transfigure himself into an angel of light. That is scary. How do you tell the good from the evil? This guy's an angel. I mean, he is an angel in real life, but fallen. But we have to realize there's someone struggling against baptism. There's someone struggling against every step you'll take with God. He'll present good things to you. Well, we could go into all the examples. I'm not going to do it. But <clears throat> so these two things. Right now, just be open to the Lord and be close to Satan. We say no to Satan. So how about, I want, I want you all to read one verse together first. Mark 16, 16. This is a very famous verse in the Bible. He who and is baptized shall be saved, but he who does not believe shall be condemned. Okay, what do you need to do to be saved? Right? Well, that's one more time. Everyone's, so we're all clear. What do you need to do to be saved? So he who believes is saved, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute. How about, how about he, who, he who is baptized and believes shall be saved? The order is very important. <clears throat> okay, okay. But then, how about to be condemned? What, what do you not need to do? What about baptism? Isn't that interesting? The Bible doesn't waste words. The Bible doesn't make mistakes. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. But to be condemned, baptism isn't even mentioned. Very interesting. We're going to get into this. By the end of this, you will be crystal clear. I'm crystal clear on this verse. Hopefully you will be too. So I want to go through the story of the Exodus. This will just take a couple minutes. Um, so we had 10 plagues, exposed the world, the condition of the world. This was partly so that God's people would be set free, be released, like Moses told Pharaoh. Jehovah says, let my people go three days into the wilderness to hold a feast unto me. So go out to worship Jehovah. Pharaoh says, stay here. I'll make you work harder to try to occupy you. 
Or maybe just the man can go, why don't you just have a feast here? Egypt's a nice place. No, Egypt is not a nice place. No matter how nice it was, this was not the place to worship God. God's desire, Egypt typifies the world. Pharaoh typifies Satan, the ruler of this world. Do not worship God in the world. Do not take worldly methods to worship God. You need to go out. Get away. Just get out. Get out. So they had the last plague, the killing of the firstborn. That was the Passover. God's people were saved. Why? Because they had the blood of the lamb covering them, which is Christ as our sacrifice. They ate the flesh of the lamb. Christ is our food to be strengthened for their journey. And that morning, after that last plague, everyone said, please just leave. We want you out of here. Pharaoh said, get away. Go away. So what happens? Oh, can I get the map? This is good. Okay, good. So I don't know exactly where they were. Probably up around here somewhere. Um, you can look at some map of old cities and stuff. But they were, they were here in the land of Goshen. Their destination is the good land, the good land of Canaan, which is up here. If you're here and you want to get there, which way is the quickest way to go? Like here, right? If they would have Googled, got a Google Maps, it would have said, you know, quickest way, saves the most gas, this and that. You know, this, any other way is a scenic route. It's not like, you know, about the same time. It's like, you know, two days, you know, seven weeks. But that's not the way they went. Uh, the Lord led them. They, they didn't just go out and, oh, which way are we going? There was a pillar. By day it was a cloud. By night it was fire. This is the Spirit. This is the Spirit of Jehovah leading them. He did not lead them that way. He led them down here somewhere. You could say, God, you did not study geography. But don't say that. God knows what he's doing. So what happens is, and even, even Jehovah said to Moses, you know, what's going to happen? I'm going to take you this way, somewhere down here. And Pharaoh's going to say, hey, they're wandering aimlessly in the land, the wilderness hemmed them in, and he's all hard in Pharaoh's heart one last time. And he's going to pursue you, which is exactly what happened. You can read about it, Exodus chapter 14. Most of the verses are here, and I'm not going to read them like I normally don't. I'll read them. So the people are here, and then Pharaoh with his chariots come after them. And the people's reaction was, you know, we just, we just trust Jehovah so much. You know, we, we've seen all the wonders and the plagues and how we were preserved. and We just know what God is doing. And they didn't say that. They said, we're going to die. Moses, whoa. weren't there enough graves in Egypt you had to take us? Didn't we just say, just leave us in Egypt, let us be? And Moses says, hey, just, you know. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the salvation of Jehovah. Because, you know, God was going to glorify himself one more time. And I think we probably all know the story. Um, the Red Sea parted. And, you know, this is not just crossing a little creek. This is like, you know, this is some miles. But the waters parted. They stood up. Even it says the, the word is like they congealed. They almost became solid. I don't know if they had a cold snap and turned to ice. but Anyway, so the children of Israel, they crossed over. And, you know, there was the pillar. And eventually the pillar went behind them. To them it was light. To the Egyptians it was darkness. And, but then eventually the Egyptians went in and... And Moses said, okay, they're all in, and we're gonna, the water's going to come back, and it's going to drown them all. They are sinking to the bottom. Actually, they weren't sinking. They are already at the bottom of the Red Sea. 
So this was a great triumph. This was a great thing. Now, what did this accomplish? On one hand, God is glorified. You know, God triumphs again. Pharaoh and his forces typify all of Satan's forces. All of his armies, where are they now? Bottom of the Red Sea. They were not going to bother them anymore. So, but they're over here. What if they said, let's go back to Egypt? Now there's a Red Sea in between them. And they would not, it would not part for them to go back to Egypt. So they are thoroughly separated. So this accomplished the judging of Satan and his forces. Also set the people fully free from all of Satan's tyranny and all of the things in the world that were, would, you know, that's why that song, it says, no more of the world. You could sing it, bind me. That's not bad. That's like, you know, imprisoning you. But it's no more the world shall blind me. We get blinded by the things of the world. There's a lot of good things in the world, a lot of attractive things in the world. But eventually, they'll just keep us here. And the world will say, why not just worship God where you are? God says, leave. You want to worship me, you've got to worship in my way, in my place. But the world says, stay here. This is one of Satan's tactics. Now, okay, we read Mark 16, 16, right? He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. They had the Passover. During the Passover, this was, say, uh, this was God's judgment, you could say, on the sinners. God's judgment on the world, God's judgment on Satan. They were saved from that judgment. This is our believing. You know, one day, for everybody, I don't, I don't care if you were raised Christian. At one point in your life, maybe you don't even remember it, it's okay. But at one point in your life, you had to acknowledge Christ as your Savior. Not just, I've been taught this, or my folks believe it, or my grandfather was a pastor. None of that matters. This is all personal for you. At some point, Christ has to be your Savior. At some point, you need to receive the Lord into you. At some point, you need to pray a simple prayer, Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I take you as my Savior. This is, this is the real experience of the Passover. Then we have escaped from God's judgment and God's condemnation. But where were they? Egypt. Okay. Um, Kevin, you're going to take a boat ride. Okay? You're going to take a, we're gonna, you're gonna take a cruise. Okay? And um, you get on, the, on this boat, big ship, and... Right away you get sick, not seasick. You get, you get some life-threatening, serious uh, bacterial anaerobic infection. It is going to kill you. How do you feel? You can't feel anything. You're, you're too sick. But this is a really, really well-equipped ship. And it's got a very good medical department. And they have got just the right antibiotic to treat your illness. And they get it to you. And you recover. Isn't that great? Yeah. Wonderful. The ship you're on is the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what? And you're not one of the rich and famous. You're not one of the women and children. You're just a guy. Who's going to go down with the ship? You can say, great, I'm saved. Oh, where's that iceberg? Can we, you know, I'm dead. <laughs> Egypt is the Titanic. The world is the Titanic. The world is going to be judged. The world is not going to last. The world is not going to... Even you're saved. If you're in Egypt, 
Are you really saved? Your position matters. Now, I mean, you know, you can get into, well, does that mean I'm going to hell? And You know, I would say this in relation to even the first thing I said. A lot of the things we've been taught are not that complete. I'm not going to get into all these things now. You believe in the Lord, you receive the Lord as your Savior, you will not go to hell for eternity. But you also will not fully enter into salvation. You've got to get out of Egypt. That's what baptism does. That's why we can say, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. If you don't believe, you're condemned already. If you only believe and are not baptized, you're in the wrong place. You're in the Titanic. You're in the world. You're going to suffer some degree of judgment. Because God's desire is not that we would be saved and go to heaven. Sorry. I'm not saying, you know, again, you know, you get saved, you just believe in the Lord. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's a marvelous thing. It's an amazing thing. It does so much for you. You've escaped eternal perdition. But you haven't fully entered into God's purpose. God's purpose was not even just to get them out of Egypt. They had to go here. They had to experience Mara and then Elam. And then they had to experience enjoying the manna. And they had to experience Christ as the smitten rock flowing the water out. They had to go to Mount Sinai to get the testimony of God. Eventually, they've got to get to the good land. And they've got to build Jerusalem so God can have his temple, which is his place of worship. So God can have his house on the earth, his household, his expression, and his kingdom. This is the Old Testament type. New Testament, this is the church. God is building the church. This is God's goal. Why did you get saved? To build the church. Why do you get baptized? To build the church. Why do you enjoy Christ as the manna? Why do you enjoy Christ as the flowing water? Why do you enjoy the testimony of God? It's all together to build up God's testimony. This is God's original intention. This is God's original desire. He's never wavered from that. He didn't say, oh, man fell. Oh, I've got to change my plan. No. Everything works together for that. Christ's crucifixion was not an add-on. Christ's crucifixion was part of the original plan. You might not realize that. I'm not going to share about that tonight. Maybe some other time. God knows what's going to happen. And it's not just God knows what's going to happen. It's like, how can I nullify the devil? I've got to get him to join himself to man. Then I'm going to crucify all of mankind in Christ. So that's why Hebrews, what is it, 2.14, says he destroyed him who has the power of death. That is the devil. The devil's been annulled. The devil's been made of none effect. This is the spiritual reality. But anyway, <clears throat> what's our goal? Jerusalem. 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 You can say the good land. That's not good enough. I mean, the good land's great. What's our goal? Get into the good land. Drive the enemies out. Wonderful. If you don't build Jerusalem, you're still short of the goal. Actually, this is all of God's, all a part of God's complete salvation. You're an ROTC. Do they show you how to shoot guns? Is that... <laughs> Is that so you can shoot clay pigeons and, you know, impress your friends? You know, we don't want to talk about that. That's because you guys might be in war someday. I want you guys to be really well trained to protect me. I'm really happy. I wish there were more. I'm too old to go fight. David, you're not. But, you know, there's a goal. And there's a warfare. And there's an enemy, and he's doing everything he can to stop us. Now, they were in Egypt, and what did he do to stop them from leaving? Many things. But they got out. Now, we'll get into this later, but, you know, the, they, they begin to enjoy the manna. There's no food. So they get this miraculous, really miraculous stuff called manna. 
Should we enjoy the manna? What if they had said, you know, it's really nice here. There's some springs of water, and we're enjoying this manna. And at night, there's quail. A lot of people don't notice that. So they get meat and they get bread. Let's just stay here. It's great. And if someone said, well, no, that's not what God's doing. They'd say, God's giving us the manna. Right? And God is providing everything for us. He got us out of Egypt, and we're here, and we're worshiping God. Why can't we stay here? You could say, this is all in the Bible. How would you argue with someone like that? I just say, it's not Jerusalem. This is not the goal. Okay, they get to Sinai. They get the law. The law isn't just the Ten Commandments to bear down on us. The law is the testimony of God. The law is an amazing thing. Were they in the presence of God there? I mean, if you've ever read the Bible, you'd have to say, they were in the presence of God. God is there, appearing. God is speaking directly to them. They're getting the word of God. Why don't we just stay here? Wouldn't that be good? It's not Jerusalem. It's not where God wants them to be. So I'm going to say something. You have to understand me right. Satan can use all of these things to stop you. It's like there's this big race, millions of people on the starting line, all saved. And Satan's only goal is to keep you from the finish. You reach the finish, he's done. So he'll do anything. He might try to kill you physically. Take care of yourself. Don't do stupid things. Don't take risks. You don't, you've got an enemy. He can use good things. He can attract you with the world. He can give you a big promotion. Oh, but you've got to work on Sunday. And, you know, it's like, the only time I need to keep open are Wednesday night, Friday night, Sunday morning, I can work any other time than that. You'll get a great job. And they'll say, we only need you to work three times, Wednesday night, Friday night, and Sunday morning. That sounds funny, except that happens. And you'll say, but I'm still a Christian. I still love God. I, you know, I'm, I'm still, still a Christian. I'm here in the world, I'm worshiping God. You are not in Jerusalem. I'm here enjoying the manna. Something of God. Great. God doesn't want you out in the wilderness enjoying manna. He wants you in the good land, laboring in the land for the solid produce. So I'm going to end here. But I hope you can be impressed. Well, I'm not going to end quite yet. There's one more thing I want to say. I hope you can be impressed with the significance, the meaning, the... Um, indispensability of baptism. Now, you know, Mark 16, 16 says, believe and be baptized. If you look at the New Testament, um, after Jesus, it was always in that order, believe and be baptized, believe and be baptized, believe and be baptized. And that was 20 centuries ago. In the intervening time, you know, there are, there are Christians, Christian groups, and I'm not saying they're not genuine Christians, nothing like that, who will say, you don't need to get baptized. Well, if you don't have a view of, I need to get to the good land, I need to be one with God and his move, yeah, you don't need to be baptized. But if you, if you want to be in God's army, I mean, you want to be in God's army, you've got to be baptized. So you got baptized. Now you're qualified. You know, getting baptized, it's really an amazing thing. I knew, I knew one guy a long time ago. He was a student. And he just would not get baptized. He was a believer, and he'd go to Bible studies and things, but talking about baptism, he would not get baptized. And we said, why don't you want to get baptized? He said, if I get baptized, I'm going to have to be serious with God. That's going to like change my life. 
I, I moved away from there, and a few years later I was visiting, and um, I saw someone that looked like him. Um, but he was different. Mm -hmm. He was really enjoying, and I was asking, so, and then, well, yeah, he, you know, goes and preach the gospel and does all these kind of things. Mike, is that, yeah, that's him. I said, what happened? So he got baptized. <laughs> I've seen this many times. It, 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 it's, it's real. Yeah. It's like you get dunked in water. It's like I take a bath every day or I get a shower. What's the difference? There's a difference. There's a, there's a spiritual reality to baptism. You know, they didn't just go swimming across the Red Sea and end up on the other side. They were separated. And Satan's forces were wiped out. So, now I was, I can say I've been baptized twice. The first time, I was an infant. And um, where I was, that was the practice. And I believe many people were baptized as an infant. I just want to say that doesn't count. That might trouble some people. And if you go back and talk to your pastor, and oh, well, they, I know some Christians don't teach that, but you know. But what really, what does it accomplish? Um, now, some would teach that actually you receive the Spirit during that time. That's really, really a hard case to back up from the Bible. Um, there's a couple verses you can kind of twist and say, see, that's what it really means. And no, it doesn't. It was always an adult believing and getting baptized. Um, some, some would say, probably more properly, it, you, you don't get saved through baptism. Um, actually, it's just kind of a dedication. You know, that, that's, that's not bad, but then what does that do for you? Eventually, you've got to get baptized. Believe and be baptized. So I just, I just kind of submit this to you. I don't want to trouble anyone, and I'm not here to cause friction. But at the same time, I feel like I owe you the truth. If you want to be one with God, you've got to believe and be baptized. And we're not going to force anyone because it's an individual choice. And actually, they didn't get baptized that day. They wandered for a while. Sometimes you've got to wander for a while. It's okay. But eventually, the Lord will make clear, I've got to get baptized. Do you have to understand everything about baptism? No. Does it, does it matter? Well, I, didn't, I didn't understand this nuance about it. I need to get baptized again, again, and again, weekly. No, don't do that. If it's real, if it's real, it counts. And the last thing I'd say, you can think about what if, what if, what about this case, special case, all these kind of things. Yeah, they are special cases. And there's this and that. Um, and I would just say, leave those up to God. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to figure out what happens to this person if he does this and this and this. God is much wiser than I am. He's much more righteous than I am. He's fairer than I am. He will treat everyone properly. But for me... I'm a believer. I want to be in God's army. I want to be ROTC now. <laughs> Maybe ROTG or something. We want, we want to get into this. So um, we're going to stop. Um, I see a, maybe a question. But um, if you have a question, we can, we can have more fellowship later. I'm, I'm very happy, and others are very happy to talk about this. Uh, so... Just one final. I've already gone too long, but that's okay. This is really important. So just remember, right now, you know, we're open to the Lord. Now we really need to close off the devil. Because after a word like this, we know the way the devil operates. The thoughts will come in. Questioning. What about? What about? What about? Just, just refuse those. Just limit yourself to the word of God. You can just say, Satan, go away. Stop bothering me. And if you want to fellowship about some points, it's fine. We can do that.